And hello and welcome to Programming for Engineers, or actually data structures at the same time. What we're going to do today is we're going to solve this problem and it's going to teach you a lot about how to do programming both in Python and working with structures here. So uh, I'm going to do it in Python in this case just because it's an easy way to get this done. Here's the problem. You've got nine tasks you have to complete. Every task is going to pay a different amount of money and every task has a deadline. You, you don't complete a uh, task by its deadline, you're not going to get paid for it. So what we want to do is we want to optimize the amount of money that you get paid by making sure that you get as many tasks that are high paying done as soon as you possibly can. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. Okay, now, how are we first going to represent the data here? Well, here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array of tuples that represents the task number, the time at which the task has to be done, and the amount of money you're going to get paid for the task. That's easy enough to do. I'm going to go ahead and run, and I'm going to run the cell here, and I'll run, run the selection, and boom. Okay, so now that tuple is in the memory, and I can go and I can hunt it down here. Boom, there it is, all the tuples there that represent the data. Um, we're going to need some functions here to solve this. One is how much you're going to get paid for any individual task. So let's go, um, what is pay? I've created this function here that basically goes through and says, if in an array of tuples, the, the value of the, of the tuple in the array is before the time at which you have to complete it, the, the total of amount of money gets added to what you're going to get paid. So basically I've created this, uh, this value and notice that, that I can actually reference information in the tuple just like I can a multi-dimensional array. It's a nice thing about tuples. So if I do that, I'm going to go ahead and run, and I'm going to run the select. Okay, so now that's gotten run. So now, so now I can actually see what happens. How much did somebody get paid for something? So let's go ahead and run that, um, run that line. So if you just had, if you didn't do anything, if you simply had done them in the order that the tasks were given, you would make $65. That was what I have right here, what is pay that um, of the... Um, of the tuple array and the actual tuple array is printed out. So 65 bucks if you added up all those numbers together for only the ones that you completed on time. Because what I did is I put an if then then and said you only get added to the total unless you get it done on time. All right, so what, what are some ways that we can actually go about this? Well, let's first think about, well, what if we just sorted the tasks by, um, uh, in this case, let's just sort them by um, the first element, which is the amount of money. So let's do that, and I'm going to use my, uh, my item getter operator here, and I'm just going to create another tuple array that is the same array, only it's sorted. Okay, so now I've got it sorted by, um, by in this case, the times. Um, that's now in T1, and if I look at that, I can see you know, hours two, two, three, three, four, five, five, seven, seven. Okay, so there we go. And I can, I printed it out here and that actually didn't even, that turned out even worse because you only made $53 in that case. Um, right down here is where it is. So, okay, well that didn't, that didn't help me any. Well, what about sorting it by pay? I can do the exact same thing here. Um, I can go ahead and sort it. In this case, I have to use the reverse equals true and the item getter, which is two, which is gonna be the second element, uh, the, the, well, the third element in the array, but item number two, which is the amount of money. And if I run that and run the selected current line, so time, so now that's T2, and that's by amount of money, but it gives me 86. Well, that was better than the first case, which is 65, so 86 is better. All right, well, what are some ways we can go about solving this? Well, one is, let's just look at every single permutation that you've possibly got um, of ways that we can sort the thing. Ha, 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 ha. All right. Um, so I'm going to use iter tools for my iterators, and I'm going to load permutations. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, and boo, yeah, there it goes. It was pretty quick because it's a pretty well built in. And now if I look at, there are 362,880 permutations, possible permutations of the way that you can organize this. Wow, that's a lot. Um, so there it is. I've got all the different permutations of this. And if I look at P, it's going to say, oh, it's really big. So I can slow things down. So what I'll do is I just want to know the maximum here. So I'm going to go ahead and put good old print max 
into memory, which is my little function that I've got that will print out the maximum. So all it does is it goes through, calculates the pay, and then remembers where that is. So now if I print max of V, I can run that, and that is going to be a maximum of 147 bucks. And I essentially do task 2, task 7, task 9, task 5, 3, 1. And then the last two don't matter because they're past time, so they're not even going to get added into the total. But there's one slight problem with doing it this way, which is basically, if you look at this P, there's 362,880 permutations, which you should probably be able to figure out since there's nine elements in the array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine factorial. That means you've got nine factorial permutations. Hey, it's going to work with nine. But what if you add more than nine? What if you had 10? Well, if you had 10, you're going to have 10 factorial, which is basically going to multiply this number by 10, which now makes it 3.62 million. It gets real big real fast. So let's see if we can come up with some ways to do this that might be a little bit faster. Uh, one of which might be simply to create an array that um, for each of the different times, for each of the elements of only those options which are available to you. So like at time eight, um, well, none of them are available to you at time eight because there you've got to finish them all before hour seven. So those don't even matter. So only those items that are available to you in that time frame are important. So I've written this little function here that will do that. Um, so let's go ahead and run that baby. And... Um, and if you look at it, all it's doing is it's going through all the different ones. And if, it, uh, and if the element in the array, the tuple in the array, is a legal tuple, it adds it to another array. So now that's going to create this little thing, S. So it, at S of 0 is all of the tuples that you can have, all the different options you have in hour 1. And then in hour 2, well, hour 2 actually has the same number. Hour three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through. Okay, so those are the ones that you have available to you if you want to do if you want to look at that. And I could actually print those out. I'm not going to do that. So now, how can we? What can we do with that? Well, um, one of the things to do is I can actually take the product of an array. Um, in this case, I've got seven arrays that I need a product of. But um, let's just do one for right now and show you what, how that works. So I'm going to go run, I'm going to run that, and then if I look at C, which is the variable I put that in, I've got the first two hours, all the different combinations of those first two hours as a set of tuples. That's why you only see one and two. So these are the different things you could do. And if you thought of, look about it, you can see that, that it should make sense that you've got how many that you have should actually make sense that there's 80, actually there should be 86, but there's not 86 because there were some duplicates, and I removed those by using list set C, which removes them. If I did just this, then, and I ran that, um, and I'll do it without that. Um, okay, and then I go back to C. Uh, nine, well, actually, it's nine times nine, 81. Actually, there were no duplicates when I think about it because I'm multiplying this zero times S1. I wouldn't have to any duplicates I'd have to worry about there, but 81. And since there's nine numbers, nine times nine, 81, it all makes perfect sense. Got a problem though. Um, I got more than two. I got to do a whole bunch of them. So now let's see, I'm going to go ahead and then instead of, uh, and this product is actually built into iter tools. So I can use the product. The thing is I got to multiply all of the different times to do this. And there's seven legal hours. So I'm going to multiply the seven legal hours. So let's do that. Boom, 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 boom. Run, and then run it. And when I do that, um, it does it pretty quick. If I look at C now, there's 204,120. There's a whole bunch of them. It says, oh my gosh, there's a whole lot there. Um, there's less than there were when I did the permutations, okay, because I reduced the number down by quite a bit. And if you were dealing with much larger sets with a little bit better capability of filtering it, this makes perfect amount of sense on so how you're going to do this algorithmically. I can print the max here, but I still got one problem that you're going to find out if you look at this. When I print the maximum, the max comes out to be 182. Well, that can't be right because we already know the maximum is 147 based on the permutations. And why is that the case? Because 
I was not able to remove, in this case, look, you got 182, which is 3,530, 3,530. Well, item three gets multiplied um, over and over again because it's, well, it's maxed out. It's, but, but why is it in there multiple times? Well, simply because it should be in there five times because you, it's hour five. So one, two, three, four, five. So five times it's in there. We didn't filter that out. We didn't filter out duplicates. Okay, well, guess what? If we're going to do this right, we're going to have to pull the duplicates out of that product set. So let's do that. Let's make a definite, let's just make this little function, has duplicates, um, and it just returns true or false. And now I'm going to make a copy of the array, um, and I'm going to put it in D, and I'm going to remove the duplicates from D that I see in C, because, well, it's a copy. The thing about doing this, if I don't make a copy of this, if I actually make D equal to C, then C and D look at the same thing. And if I do a for C1 and C, well, guess what? As I'm removing the duplicates from C, I'm changing C while I'm going through the for C1 and C. That's why I made a copy, and I'm going to remove them from the copy. boo da da ba da ba da ba da um, Okay, run, boo ba ba boo bow, F9. All right, so now... When I'm done, D is really kind of reduced down here quite a bit. I've got 4,320 items in D. So um, now I've kind of got a, nice, a smaller set. I've gotten past my, some of my issues about the good old big O, this sucker being factorial and blowing up really, really fast when you have a lot of values. So now I'm going to go ahead and print out the maximum for D. Actually, I'll just do D and P. D will be on the top. P is the permutations, everything. D is just the ones that we had where we filtered it down and we ran it. So I'm going to run this, run, booyah, and they both give me 147. But you will note, um, or you may note, I think, um, yeah, there's a slight order difference here. Um, doesn't make a difference in the solution just because of the way that we actually ran the algorithm to find the max. We went sequentially through them and we picked up the last one that we found in the case of the second case, the last one we found had the second, the, the last, and the next to last elements in a slightly different order, but they're all legal because they can all be done before hour seven, and hour seven is this one here. Also note that when I did the cross product, I only did cross products up to seven hours because, well, hours eight and hours nine, which are your nine tasks, make no difference whatsoever. Now, Hopefully you've watched this and learned a whole lot of really cool stuff that you can do calculationally inside of Python and solving problems. But here's the point of the story. There's a lot of ways to solve this problem. And uh, many times as a programmer, this is the, the data structures guys, when you run up to a problem, um, the, the limitations of the complexity of the algorithmic complexity can hit you hard. You know, when you're doing a factorial and something with the complexity of a factorial number of solutions, it can get you. Also, note that even when I reduced it down, there were a lot of little things that I needed to do to solve the problem to get down to the solution. So I had to do some extra steps, like doing the cross product and removing the duplicates, then going in and printing it out of the removed duplicates that you can see there. So, um, But you can also see that there's a lot of tools that make this a really cool thing to do. Anyway... There it is. You can see that I've solved the problem. You can bring the, I'll bring the problem back over here. Um, what, another moral of this is some things that would be really hard to solve by hand, like if you only had nine tasks here, well, that's not terrible. But large scale um, problems of optimization, um, you can spend days working on these suckers, whereas you get a good algorithm going, you can solve them pretty quickly. So anyway... Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned a lot from the code that I had there. Um, good programming, and uh, the code will be posted up on my data structures website. Talk to you later.